<laughs> is this thing on? What's up, you sexy motherfuckers? Welcome to another episode of Dumb Blonde. Today, I really know this guest. He's, I know I'm up close and personal. I know what his insides look like. No, I'm just kidding. You do not. <laughs> <laughs> it's my husband, the one, the only, Jason D. Ford. Howdy. How's your mammy and no? Thanks so much for coming by on my podcast. Yeah. I can't believe I actually got like a star like you on my podcast. Dude, I cannot believe that I took four steps from our kitchen to our kitchen table to do it neither. It was so out of my way. <laughs> he was, uh, he was. Thank you for booking it through my publicist and calling my manager. <laughs> he was so excited. He's like, I can't believe I get to record this podcast in my boxers. Yeah, dude, I'm literally sitting here in my boxer briefs. Oh, so what's been going on? How's tour going, babe? You know, you were there. Hey, we're motherfucker, it. ask me questions. I'm asking you questions. You have to answer hey man i'm just hanging out man i'm not here to do a questionnaire no i'm playing no it's going really good it's like exceeded every expectation i've ever had you've been fucking crushing it dude it's it's been unreal it's like and i had a decent expectation this time but i mean it was like the first night of the tour i was like oh fuck if this is gonna be the consensus of the tour this is gonna be crazy (laughs) it's been like you've been fucking selling out just room after room after room it's been really beautiful to watch yeah it's been surreal man just thanks to everybody who's ever bought a ticket or what i don't know i mean i don't dude it's like i don't even know how to thank people properly because it's so fucking flabbergasting overwhelming it is man it's uh to see people like i was just posted like to see fucking seven eight hundred thousand twelve fifteen hundred people singing and feeling the same way together is such a beautiful thing yeah, no, it's dope. And you can, I was telling you the other day that when you go to like one of your concerts, it's like going to a church service because it's like super therapeutic. Like you literally see people crying and dancing in the aisles and raising their hands and, you know, like just they, it's like a release for everybody that comes to your show. So I think that's really dope. No, and it's, it's touching, man. I think that what I see, I think we were talking about earlier privately was I remember these people's faces. Like they burn in my mind. Like, if you were singing my shit and you thought I looked at you during the show while you were singing it, I fucking did. Yeah. And if you were singing it passionately, I think about that shit when I lay down at night. Like, you know, I just remember your expressions like, and it just me, I don't know. It's, I can't even describe it. I get fucking chill bumps talking about it. I have so many people who send me videos or messages and they're like, look, he's pointing at me or look, he saw me. Like, and I think that's so fucking cool because you really have just this uh, amazing impact on people. And it's, it's just crazy. Like they live for some fucking jelly roll. No, dude. It's like, I think that we all live for the same. I think pain is a universal language. And God gave me a gift to speak that for all of us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like people feel like, yo, this dude came to tell my story. And I did. I did come to tell your story. I just didn't know when I was telling my story that it was our story. And you didn't know that somebody else had your story. And now it's like we're this big fucked up family. And I love it. No, I dig it. I think it's fucking awesome. Um, Let's talk about our fucking tour bus, though. Oh, dude. (laughs) Tour bus drama 101 again, dude. We had the fucking AC go out in Lubbock. It was 120 degrees. So let's rewind. My sweat was sweating. Let's rewind really quick. So last year, we got a tour bus. Two years ago. Was it two years ago? Okay, so two two years years ago, ago, we had a tour bus. We started the hashtag fuck Greg. He sucked. (laughs) Worst bus driver ever. Dude, this bus, like the bottom was falling out. Jay and I were literally driving in the back of it, riding in the back of it one night. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, something's not right, dude. Like, we're going to die. Like, You definitely did a lot of riding in the back of that thing. I'll tell you. <laughs> me and a few other girls. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no, seriously. Mama wakes me up out of sleep and goes, you hear that? And I mean, all you hear is. Arr! And I was like, I don't know. It sounds like we're hitting one of those things. I'm all fucked up. I go right back to sleep. <laughs> She wakes me up like, yo, the bus is falling apart. Listen, I'm hearing, eh. I'm like, no, you're totally okay. I go back to sleep. She wakes me up again like there's a state trooper getting on the bus. So I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? Come to find out the ass end of the bus was dragging and sparking and flaming the yeah. part where we were laying. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's trying to kill us. So fast forward to two years later, poor daddy gets another tour bus. And Hold on. Let's not overlook the fact that that cost us $15,000 oh in 
fucking three weed citations by the way (laughs) yeah i didn't want to get into all that but yeah so meanwhile the fucking uh cops that came on the bus cited everybody who had weed fucking the bus driver like it was just fucking crazy Bus driver had a bottle of open whiskey next to him what is it about bus drivers that are fucking like they fucking get crunk this bus driver we had we got him so drunk he puked on himself when we had our night off in texas (laughs) it's better than rad pole puking all over the place like he did listen the bus driver woke up with puke on his shirt and woke Jerry up and said, Jerry, Jerry, why you let somebody puke on me? <laughs> <laughs> How drunk do you got to be to fucking think somebody else puked on you? Like that's blackout <laughs> drunk. So anyways, fast forward to fucking two years, poor daddy gets another bus and literally we have videos of water pouring from the ceiling, mold, fucking what else happened with this bus? That was the second bus. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. The we first had first bus, the AC went out in Texas. So we they had, had to trade send a buses bus. mid-tour, guys. I'm so sorry. I fucking completely spaced that. What happened in Lubbock? The AC went out. And they it couldn't was that fix bad. it. Couldn't fix it. So they had to send us another bus. This bus, is was, wasn't it like Waka Flocka's bus? And it, it had <laughs> it a like bullet, bullet hole in it. It had blood in the bunk where somebody got shot. It was like, what the fuck? Dude, we are fucking cursed whenever it comes to tour buses. It's just fucked up. All right. So for the next segment of the show, I want to ask you some questions that n- most people are not going to know anything about. I want to ask you like some of your firsts, if that's okay. Because <laughs> I the mean, record, she gave me no, she didn't give me no special treatment, y'all, on this thing. I'll <laughs> let y'all know that I didn't get no prep. I didn't get no, these are the questions I'm going to ask or no, I just walked into a fire pit. <laughs> well, in my defense, I was sitting down editing and he's like, hey, you want to fucking record a podcast? And I'm like, sure, because when daddy wants to do something, I got to do it because Jay is, very, he's an artist. He's very temperamental. So if he doesn't feel like doing something, I'm not going to get his ass on the podcast. So this was my one and only chance to get daddy on here because if I would have turned it down, he wouldn't have ever came on. I try to only do things when I can do them with a good spirit. Oh, I love that. Okay, so we're going to ask you some questions because I figure everybody already knows everything about you musically and they know everything about you like... That's on Wiki, even though they don't know your real age. That is and- my real age. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Fucking so, hater. I want to start by asking you some questions that nobody's ever asked you that because you've done so many fucking interviews. I want to. I just want to be different because I'm your wife and I can. Uh, yeah, maybe. All right, yeah. you ready? What's your first pet? Oh, dude, I don't remember. I think I had like a lizard or something. I thought it was the dog that overate. No, that was a dog, but I don't think it was my first technical pet. Gotcha. I think that I had a... No, the dog that overate was my second dog. My first one was a dog named Lady, and it got hit by a car. You had bad luck with dogs, too. I know, too. man. It was so I've had sad. Bad it was a hit dogs. and run. They wrote about it in the in the Nashville, Tennessee, oh. and the dog was like the most famous dog in the neighborhood. It would come pick me up from school two miles away and walk me home. Oh. It was like a movie, for real. What kind of dog was that? It was a mutt. Oh, mutts are like the most loving. Oh, yeah, dude. It was awesome. I swear. All right, so you think your first pet was a lizard? Do you remember its name? No, I don't remember anything about it. I think it was an iguana, and I used to feed it zucchini. I do remember <laughs> this. I was like younger than Bailey. And I was like, I want a, something. And I was like, we're not getting, you know, gerbil or nothing like that. So I was like, whatever, I'll take a whatever. fucking iguana. Yeah. <laughs> Don, Here's some zucchini have you to met feed Donna your D iguana. Ford before? Yes. <laughs> we love you, Mama D. What was your first car? Oh, dude, I had a 1984 Cutlass. And then shortly after that, I got like an 89 a town car, Lincoln. Dope. So you were big pimping. Yeah, yeah. No, I, was, I was I was super. I was excited <laughs> about it. Got a Cadillac shortly thereafter. I had my first car when I was like 14. I parked it down the street and everything. Oh my God. You were such a little fucking hoodie. Yep. Dope boy. Who was your first kiss? The girl across the street. Her name was Krista Renee Hayes. Krista, where are you at, girl? Hey, Krista. Hey. She's actually in uh, Knoxville. And I used to see her all the time when I'd go up there to do shows. We'd mm-hmm. just go out and eat lunch and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. of course, it was like we never kissed again really after like being young kids and she ended up moving away to Knoxville when we were young but we stayed friends for years that's awesome Chris you should come out to a show hey you. hey hey who was your first celebrity crush oh fuck stop trying to look at my list I see I'm trying no, to eyeball yeah, my no, list I'm just trying to say I'm like god these are getting good do they get do they get crazier oh yeah for sure uh I really don't remember I was young I can tell you one of my first crushes period was my first grade teacher. Her name was Miss Harris, and she had this big bubble butt. 
Oh my gosh. Oh, dude. Blonde was, or brunette? Listen, I never forget I wanted to poke it. it was, she was a blonde. Mm-hmm. I never forget I wanted to poke her butt with a thing and see if it popped. It was that nice <laughs> oh of a my butt. God. I'm serious. And I was like, I don't know why I was so attracted Teachers to her. Teachers out here fucking young age. seducing young students by accident. Yeah, I was a kid, kid. Too. I should I not have been that infatuated with that woman's butt. I had a crush on my uh, biology teacher, but that was like. We're here to talk about my crushes, not <laughs> yours. <laughs> it's great. No, because I was trying to think who my first celebrity crush was, too, and I can't even fucking remember. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. What was one of your first fears? I don't remember. I think probably spiders. Because mm. we had a lot of spiders in Tennessee, especially like we get brown recluses really bad in the winter mm-hmm. time. And they'll yeah. be like in your shoes and shit. You remember when you got bit by one yes. or something close to that? I got, yeah. bit by, I got bit by one by my fucking vagina. Almost. You know, you had a big hole by your vagina. It was, you had two holes. <laughs> one of them was very little. The big one was from the spider. <laughs> <laughs> She's telling the truth. <laughs> What was your first sexual experience? There was a girl that lived down the street from me that was in like some sort of like a group home sort of. And she blew me next to the group home out on the, uh, you know, like they have like the, whatchamacallit, what do they call it? I can't <laughs> think about them now, like the, the air, con- like the air conditioning <laughs> thing. You know what I'm saying? And she blew me by the group home. Oh my and God. the next day I stuck it in her on top of the air conditioning thing. I'll never forget it. He's always had a thing for ratchets. That's his thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking group home yeah. sex. Let's welcome to Antioch. You got to take you. what you can get sometimes, you know? I love you so much. What was your first tattoo? I got my mother's name on my back with a rose because she always told me since I was a baby, when I die, I play the rose from Bette Midler. Oh. So I got a big rose on my back that says Donna D. Ford was my first tattoo. <laughs> I was like fucking 13. This is off the subject, but I discover a new tattoo on Jay every time he gets naked in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and he turned his back to me a couple weeks ago and I was like, is that Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Jesus on a cross. It was a pick and poke. I never finished in juvenile because it hurt so bad. <laughs> I was like, is that Elvis, baby? He's like, no, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Jesus. I did not say that. Though. I know, I know. Might have insinuated kidding. it with my tone. Like, fuck no, I would not have <laughs> Elvis on my back, though. He's awesome. <laughs> All right. Do you remember the first cell phone you had? The first type of cell phone? Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Cricket. Was it like the block phone? Oh, yeah. That's no, what I had. Block the yeah, no, block was the big block cricket. Yeah, no, was the big block cricket. Block phone? Yep, no, it was the big block cricket. That is so fucking funny. And we all, like thought we were fucking pimping, dude. Dude, I loved my cricket. I could text so fast on it. And then you know, because you had to hit, like, if you wanted to hit the K, you had to hit the five button, or the L, you had to hit the five button three times. Boop, boop, boop. I was yes. so quick with it. I love that. And then remember, we upgraded to fucking uh, Nextel's The Chirp. Everybody was I fucking had a house chirping phone around. Forever. <laughs> I still use the house phone number for like all my reward points at stores to this day gotcha oh yeah no i know we just were at a store the other day and i gave him your new number and you're like no 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 we're using my house number and i was like oh (laughs) pardon me from the 90s (laughs) (laughs) it's crazy because i still remember my house number that i grew up with too that's awesome yeah i will never forget it who is the first person you text with exciting news Oh man, text? I don't know. Because, you know, texting was such a new thing when we were young. So, no, no, probably... no, I'm talking about right now in your life. Like when you get exciting news. Oh, who's who the do first person I text right now? Mm-hmm. When you, probably like, you. When you find out something exciting. Yeah, probably you. Probably me, struggle, rail. Yeah. Just it the... depends on what the news is. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Better bring me. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Pretty much always you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Who is the first rapper you just absolutely had to listen to every day? Tupac. Tupac, mm-hmm. West like, Coast. Like 94, 95. I was, you gotta remember, I was real young, like mm-hmm. young, young, young. And Scott D. Ford played it religiously. Scott's one of my older brothers, P.S. I got two older brothers. We love and, uh, brothers. Yeah, Roger and Scott. And they're my, they're my fucking, they're my idols when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And S- Scott religiously banged strictly for my N-I-G-G-A, mm-hmm. for sure. Like banged it, like banged the, I mean, obnoxiously banged it. <laughs> like just played that shit out. Played a lot of Too Short too back in. I love Too Short, two West Coast rappers. And look at you ended up marrying a West Coast bitch. Mm-hmm. Cause we just were cool like that, we're cool like that. All right, do you remember the first time that you ever had to stand up for yourself? Yeah, so I've always been fat. Serious moment, like I've been a big, like, like as a kid I was a big kid. So it was like literally in the first or second grade kept picking on me about being mm. fat kids are so fucking mean man and i went to my brothers about it i was like what do i do they keep calling me fat and they was like hit them I was like, <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm saying it sure enough 
Oh, yeah. that's so sad. We just recently had to go through a, a bullying thing with Bailey, and I just hate it. I hate that kids have to go through it, but I also feel like it's um, a necessary evil, right. you know, to where that it kind of like you know shapes your character. Yeah, teaches you to stand up for yourself and makes you get a backbone. Yeah, take no shit. Do you remember your first regrettable hairstyle? Oh, dude, <laughs> I had the Antioch bangs. Listen, what is that? <laughs> listen, oh, no. you know how you get like, like... Like the bowl cut? No, yeah, I had a bowl cut too, but I don't almost regret that nearly <laughs> as bad as these. It was like, you know, the they came down on my eyebrows. It's like the rest of my head was shaved in a fade and then the front of my hair combed forward into like just... Who told you? The Boston bangs? They like, were who, way Boston worse. Has? Imagine if he had them down by, like, literally touched his eyebrows. Who told you that was attractive? It was a thing in Antioch. Everybody had them when we were that age. Oh it was like God. a big deal. I need to go to Donna D. Ford's and fucking look through yeah. some photo like albums. One of my cooler haircuts was I had the rat tail forever. I love rat and tails. And I dyed it blonde. I'm all about rat tails. Yeah. Donna would dye it blonde. My mama would dye it blonde like every fucking <laughs> other week that is so funny i gotta see these there pictures. was one point it came down to the middle of my back i just had a rat tail down the middle dude of my back. you a had fucking braids one. down to the middle of your back i it's, did i had my braids were so long once don't even disrespect me by saying they were in the middle of my back they were longer <laughs> i could tuck them in my belt loop in your butt crack absolutely not what did you say something else about my butt i'm leaving the podcast <laughs> i love you <Matt. laughs> all right so i think you pretty much answered this question a second ago but do you remember your first blow job yeah, that was it. Was it was the, yeah. the girl from the fucking um, homeless shelter. It was incredible. She was not homeless, okay? I went to a group home a few times a myself. A group home, okay, yeah. sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> Same thing. No, I'm just kidding. It was incredible. It was incredible. <laughs> it was incredible. It was lie. your first blowjob. Yeah, How would you I mean, know? Even since then, I've you know had a few, and oh I'll tell you, it was, a, it was a whopper. Do you remember the first midget you banged? Yes. Who was it? I was. I don't remember her name, but I was 18. <laughs> oh, my God. I just came home. Me and her went to high school together. And she was a midge? Yeah, no, oh. there, was, there was a couple of midgets in high school. I love little people. They're he the coolest does. people For ever. those of you who don't know, Jay is, like, obsessed with midgets. So any midgets that are listening to my podcast, if you guys would like to come home with us, I would love to have you. Yes. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> do you believe in love at first sight? Yeah, I do yeah. now. I didn't before you. I knew I was in love with you when I met you, though. Whatever. You're such a little smooth operator, but I'll take it. <laughs> what was the first thing you learned to cook? Eggs. Eggs? Yeah. That's why you make them so fucking good. I'm awesome at making eggs. He is amazing at making breakfast, ladies man. and gentlemen. You yeah. guys have no idea. Whenever he's like, hey, baby, you want me to make your breakfast? I'm always like, yes. Because yeah. <laughs> it's no, so dude. fucking amazing. Yep. Mama taught me how to make eggs real young. And my daddy taught me how to grill right after that. I love that. All right. So for the next segment, we're going to um, go over. He insisted that people ask him questions. I insisted because <laughs> everybody else who's been on your podcast, you've done something like, yo, I'm having such and such on my podcast. Ask questions. And I was like, why don't I get that luxury? I just figured that, you know, you wanted to do something different with mama. So I want to be treated fair. What okay? I did was I went on my Instagram <laughs> and I asked for you guys to ask Jelly questions. So we're going to get into some of those. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Straight out the gate. Would you ever consider going on tour with Tech 9 Absolutely. We love Tech. Uh, dude, fucking super love. Like just such a great. I love the entire Strange Music Company. Mm. I haven't met anybody that works there yet that I don't like. Yeah. No, they're awesome. All of them over there are great. The two ladies that came to your show the other night were awesome, too. And yeah, they Jan, there, Jan's they? a sweetheart. Yeah. yeah, I love Jan. When are you and Bunny going to have a little baby? I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. My wife has this really, really fucked up thing where she tells me she's ovulating as soon as she's finished ovulating. <laughs> Whatever. She, she, she will be riding around or something, and she'll be like, oh, God, I'm still wet. And I'll be like, from fucking what? She'll be like, I'm ovulating. I'll be like, news, we should pull over, pull over, park your car. Whatever. I think babies, you have to like really plan those things out, and it's fucking scary situation. But I'm ready. I'm ready whenever you are. Let's go I make a baby. I think y'all just heard this. the answer. We see the hurdle here, right, people? Y'all see what the roadblock let's, is? Let's go make a baby after this podcast, baby. Let's do it Would on you? the podcast. How did you meet Bunny? I was touring, and we had had a show in Vegas, and she got drugged there. It was, it was really fate. 
you know, fate just would have it. You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? It complete was just, destiny. Yeah, you know, just complete fate. <laughs> and she came and she didn't know who I was and had no clue. You could tell it was one of those things like she just got drugged there by a fucking her dude and her dude's friend and one of her girlfriends. She was just there. And we I was like, and right then I was like, dude, I really am attracted to that woman. Oh, do you still feel that way? Yeah, absolutely. More now than I did then, to be honest. I love you. I was always super attracted to him. I don't know what it was because he was obviously not my type and like it was just crazy, but I just... What, what is your type? I don't really have a type. What if I'm not it? You must have something that is. <laughs> but you <laughs> y'all know. Y'all should see her. She's blessing y'all. She's fire <laughs> engine red right now. I've she, never dated she, a Southern dude. I'm all about the West Coast. <laughs> you know, like I just, I could never picture myself even being with a country dude. I you wish know? y'all could have seen the foot and mouth that just happened. I mean, it was fucking, it was clap. We got to start video in these things, man. That was the best ever. <laughs> what inspires you to write your songs? They're so deep well i think it's like we talked at the beginning of this pain is international man and 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 so when i was young literally like younger than bailey my best friend that lived down the street drowned Mm -hmm. and it was my first real experience with death and i look back at that and i think about you know all the time i dealt with death after that and my mother fighting her own demons it was an escape yeah music was a it was a way out you know, it was, and it was a way to express myself. There was, a, there was a time in my life, believe it or not, that I wasn't as articulate as I am now. I wasn't good at, like, talking about stuff, <laughs> right? And even now, I'm not good at, like, expressing feelings. Like, I feel them, and I live in them, and, but I don't know how to, like, talk through them. Man, you know what I'm I saying? I feel that, yeah. so, like, 100%. So it's like writing music gave me a way to express something that I couldn't sit down and explain to you how I was feeling inside. Like to this day, if I'm feeling a certain way, not even a song I write, like I'll find a song that will express how I feel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of how I've always been. It's a music speaks for you when words can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. What is your favorite thing about the domestic side of wifey? She's a cooking motherfucker. (laughs) And I also think it's like, the first thing people that don't know us see you and say is, oh, she's a gold digger. And then literally the second thing they say is, I bet she can't cook or clean. And it's like, first of all, we could eat off the fucking floor around here. She's the most OCD woman I've ever seen in my whole fucking life. Like, walks around with a bottle of fucking fucking Windex and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's crazy. something there. Cause she's got the duster out all the fucking time. He calls me the counter Nazi. Yeah, no, she'll throw shit away. She's heartless, y'all. She don't care. It could be super important. You man, don't even leave a necklace on the counter. It's out of there. You gotta go. <laughs> if you left it, you don't need it. <laughs> if it's a sack of weed sitting on the counter to the trash, it goes. I'm telling you, she, just, she doesn't. It's almost like she's just blind and grabbing shit, throwing it in a fucking sack. In reality, I am fucking blind. And she's a cooking motherfucker, man. No. And I guess, I, I don't know, does mothering fall on the side of domestication? That's probably I another guess so, demon. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What's your favorite song you've ever recorded? That's not fair. I know, right? Yeah, it's that's like- not fair. And I'll tell you why. Because the day that my favorite song at the moment isn't one that's on my new album, I want y'all to listen to this. I've never said this publicly. The day that I don't put out an album that I can say my favorite song I've ever written right now is on this album, I'll quit putting them out. Yeah, because you do you go through phases where when you drop an album, you have like a favorite song, and then yeah. you, you it morphs to another track, and then it morphs to another track, and then you know. Like right now, probably same asshole and love the heartless are my favorite songs. Mm-hmm. But if I had to compare them, the whole catalog stands there together, like glitter, smoke and section. You have a lot. You like your catalog fall in the is fall. vast. Yeah. I tell people, come to a show, man. You won't realize yeah. how many Jelly Roll songs you might actually know until you come to a <laughs> Jelly Roll show. <laughs> come to one of these fucking sold out shows. Daddy's crushing it. What advice would you give to a parent for handling your child's other parent being an addict? Protect the kid at all costs. You know, it's um, we struggle with that over here because Bailey's mother's an addict. And some people have this philosophy that, oh, well, it, you know, it'd be okay to let them see the at least if they see the parent, they're seeing the parent, no matter what condition the parent's in. And I think it's safer, you know, I don't wish jail on my worst enemy. I've had people that have really done me wrong in life. And when I pray at night, I don't pray for them to go to jail. Right. I hope Felicia continues to go to jail to keep her, because I think it's the only thing that's going to keep her alive. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a, it's a whole different kind of a thing, man. Like I totally 100% agree with that. I'm not all for jail either, but some people just do better when they're in a structured environment such as jail. Right. So it's one of those things that's like, it's important, like protect the kid at all costs, man. Like fuck that person, fuck their feelings, fuck what they say about you, fuck how they feel. If they're toxic for the child, protect the fucking child. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And you do an amazing job of that with Bailey. You're uh, sometimes for me, you're too fair, but I see why you do it. It's just moving to see well, how much you protect, you know, be. And do it in a tasteful way. Mm-hmm. We've never bashed Bailey's mother to her. Never. You know what I mean? Like, never. And we don't really bash her at all. If anything, I just say that I don't respect the woman that she is. I don't respect any mother. I don't respect my own mother, you know, for not raising me and then leaving me. So I think any woman who doesn't raise their child and chooses drugs over their child, I feel like they, they don't deserve respect. You know, I told, I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. So male, male or female, if you're, if it's toxic for the child, keep it away from the child. Absolutely. What's better shrooms or acid shrooms. Um, I love acid, but it's super intense. And not as easy to come off of. So it's like order control. And it's a setting thing. Like there's no way to really microdose acid. You can. <laughs> yeah, you can. But it's not like super, you know, like if you get like a like a like a uh, paper strip and just cut off a little corner of it. But nobody, you know, that's not the way you do it. Like you can do a half gram of mushrooms and fucking I can go out and function. I took an eighth of mushrooms one day and moved my mother. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a li- whole eighth, like the full hero's journey, dude. Like fuck, <laughs> literally three and a half grams. There's dude, a vlog was, of it on YouTube. Was shrew, man. <laughs> Me and Boston was all the way tripping and we literally moved my mother's entire house. No, it was awesome. On acid, not happening, dude. It's you know all saying? about Utah, honey. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. That's just a fucking... <laughs> Jay was fried out of his mind in Salt Lake one time and I wasn't there. <laughs> Didn't you do shrooms and acid? <laughs> yeah, we did shrooms the first half of the day and then started drinking acid water. He earned the nickname the human pineapple. <laughs> my, my hair was just fucking everywhere. <laughs> he would call me and literally his eyes would look like fucking hip, hypnosis things <laughs> through the FaceTime and his hair just looked like the top of a pineapple. It was just insane. Well, we were tripping shrooms that day and got introduced to the birds, the electric scooters, the limes and the birds. So literally, we we went on like a fucking fourteen hour trip through this downtown Salt Lake City on fucking electric scooters, tripping acid. It's crazy. Yeah, it was one of the literally one of the best days of my life. <laughs> Boston was like, I was two blocks away and I could hear Jelly just going down the street screaming. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, Struggle says I walked into some fancy restaurant him and Yellow Wolf was in, and I walked in and went, it "Smells like shit in here." <laughs> <laughs> and Struggle was like. Sure, like it was a five star place, but in my defense, I was on shrooms and acid, so I had heightened senses. Like there was shit in there. I don't care what nobody says. And I looked around. I was like, "Yep, bull in the china shop. Can't be in here." I said that out loud. And walked back out the door. So it was like two hours later. I heard Jelly going, "It's a bird." And I was flying it, down dude. the street tripping. What's been your favorite tour memory so far on this tour? That's not a fair question either. <laughs> There's so many good ones, man. It's already just. Uh, I guess, you know, outside of the night to night, hearing people's stories, sharing people's energy, putting on a performance for people, meeting venue people, it's probably, I don't know, probably the lake. Yeah. Had a really good day out on the lake. It was good. To, anytime we get the crew together and they're harmonious like that on a day off, like our day off show, whether you follow it or not, we always do something cool. Like, it's like it's a it's a thing it's like a rule that jay has and he he's like a great boss dude like not only does he fucking take care of everybody on the crew like he makes sure that on our days off that these kids you know get to experience and his friends get to experience you know things that they've normally wouldn't ever get to experience it's important to me man we went four wheeling up through the fucking rocky mountains in gypsum colorado one time recently and we did the lake down at a sam rayburn lake and rented some jet skis and a speedboat and drug a tube behind it you know what i mean and mm-hmm. roasted s'mores that night you know and fucking it was great man it's like that's just that's the stuff that i love i love first like our dj dj chill never played blackjack till the other <laughs> night never <laughs> rode a jet ski till the other day you know what yeah. i'm saying like he's had a lot of firsts so that's we been really chill. cool yeah so you'd say that seeing the uh, people's first is probably your favorite thing it's on probably this tour. my favorite thing so far i dig that 
Is Bailey going to perform with you in Columbus, Ohio? I think so. We're working out the details now, just kind of figuring out. She went to camp this week. She'll be with us later. It's just picking and choosing shows. And she comes, we bring her, she's been to a lot. She's going to be at a lot. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't one of them. She's got a friend up there. Me and me and my buddy Rod are really close and Mickey and everybody. And Rod's daughter, Riley, and her like have been FaceTime yeah. friends for fucking five years now. You know Didn't what I mean? They, so, they hung out last year. Yeah, they finally right? got to yeah. hang out for the first mm-hmm. time. Uh, still on the topic of Bailey, what has been the biggest challenge with Bailey after her mom manipulated her view of you? Was standing the test of time to prove that that wasn't what it was, you know. And uh, also, I did it real tastefully without doing what her mother did. It would have been easy to just sit her down and be like, "Yo, listen, man, your mom's a fucking piece of shit." But that wasn't the approach I wanted to take. I just kind of wanted to prove it with time, and you know, listen, man. No words can outdo an action, period. I agree. In any situation in life. There's no amount of words that can outdo an action. And it was just important for me to live what I was talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now I talked about that on a recent um podcast. I was talking about just seeing um, you know, you go through leaps and bounds to to show Bailey that she can always count on you is really fucking cool like it's just the dopest thing to ever watch that little girl loves you wholeheartedly and nobody's gonna be able to be able to ever interfere with that ever again well bailey didn't know until recently that you know i was going to court for years before we got custody of her just to see her Mm -hmm. there was moments her mother would be petty and take me off her school list i had to go to court fight to get the right to be on the school list to continue to go to lunches for like i just had to go through a lot of shit you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and uh I do it all over again. I, I would, I would, uh, I'd jump out of a plane without a parachute. I love that. And on that note, we're going to end the questions, but I got one more question for you before we go. Yeah. A penguin walks through the door wearing a sombrero. What does he say and why is he here? La cucaracha, la cucaracha. <laughs> da da booty, so da. Nobody remembers the rest of that song. <laughs> Ever. I don't think anybody He's does. He's <laughs> fucking here to party. He is here to kick it, man. He's fucking. Is he drinking Casamigos? He's drinking Casamigos. He's got a bunch of other little penguins with him. It's fucking, it's a whole crew activity. <laughs> activity. Jelly roll. Thank you so much for coming by my podcast. I feel like you rushed me off here. <laughs> Actually, I went over with you. We're at 34 oh, minutes. Well, whoop de doo You got the longest podcast so far. Listen, I hope y'all know that my wife and I are being completely facetious Absolutely. with each other in our banter. It's, yes. This is literally how we are in the house all the time. We are busting each other's balls. Yes, I love you so much. And thank you so much for coming on my show. I love you so much. I'm proud of you. I think it's fucking dope. I love listening to him myself. And I think that what you're doing is the right thing. And I'm going to stand behind you no matter what you do. I love you so much. Um, I think this would be a perfect time to announce that you and I are going to be starting a podcast. Yeah. Called the Jelly and Bunny Show. Yeah. We have a YouTube yeah. that is uh, Jelly and Bunny. Yep. Is what it will be. I think we got to wait till we get 5,000 subscribers or something to change thousand, the name. Yeah, 1,000 okay. subscribers, yeah. No problem. Yeah. We'll put the link out. Maybe y'all can get us to 1,000 real quick. We're going to do videos for these, though. Yeah, it'll be dope. It'll also be where we do all of our Jelly Roll vlogs. Anything that's not music related for Jelly Roll will be on those. Absolutely. Whatever you guys want to catch up on, like tour, fucking just anything other than his music videos are going to go over to that youtube so 100 yeah thank you so much baby i love you yeah, mama <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in i'll see you later we love you fuckers bye